Welcome back. So starting out this three-day Thanksgiving week, uh, we have Jeff here working on the foreplane. So he's got that fixture that I created last week, and he's using that to align the rear ribs, the ones that sit behind the spar. And he's just basically setting up so he's got the right spacing, but also so they're perpendicular uh, to the spar and in the same alignment. Now you can see he's making sure that it's horizontal as well in the fixture, and it is uh, showing zero there. So this is um, pretty important that these get set correctly, um, otherwise the hangers for the elevator wouldn't work uh, correctly. And yeah, moving on to the doors, now I'm uh, actually in the process of starting to mask up around the frames here on the fuselage. So you can see I've got the yellow tape there on the outside and around that little strake extension there on the wing and getting ready to set these up so we can do some priming. And now I'm a little further along, you can see I'm actually starting to mask up on the inside there. I wanted to protect everything so we didn't get overspray all in various parts of the cabin. Um, I want to try and keep it sort of looking neat and tidy in there, even though a lot of it would be covered up uh, with trim uh, fixtures. And up in the nose compartment, you can see Dan has uh, created this bracket there. That's the aluminum one sort of that you can see behind there. That's holding the hoses for the AC unit, the heater core and the AC unit in place. And we're going to put some rubber around there just to protect those hoses a little bit. In place. And back in the cabin there, you can see that I got the roof done. I just used some brown paper on that. It was just easier to do it in smaller sections like that to keep it from hanging down. And I got the windshield uh, underway as well. And Dan was keeping busy as usual. And here you can see he's got the reservoirs for the brake um, calipers um, in place. And uh, a little bracket and a little um, manifold made for those as well. And now we're on to Tuesday morning and Jeff switched on to the other side and uh, getting that jig lined up so he can bond those uh, ribs in on the other side. And prior to that, Devin and Jeff uh, created these platforms really quickly so uh, I could actually mill the shapes for the trim panels uh, in the rear of the cabin. So that one's the uh, first one's underway. And it didn't take too long and uh, Jeff had those four ribs there clamped and then bonded into place with some high sole and just waiting for those now to set up and then he runs through with a little right angle drill and match drills the holes in the ribs there that, that made up with the hinge hangers and there's a couple of the hinge hangers there on the right hand side just uh, temporarily just set in place but you get some idea of how they're going to sit and as you can see here pretty much got the whole fuselage now uh, covered up with plastic just so we don't get overspray sort of going on anything including the engine in the back and you know the wheels and all that sort of stuff so the job now is just to finish off the little bit of sanding and then uh, clean everything up and plug the holes and uh, get ready for primer and Devon's just starting to mix up some high soles so they can bond the conduits uh, into the wings now these are the conduits that are going to carry um, not only the rudder cables but also the wires for the lighting uh, for the lights on the wingtips and also um, the wires for the analysis equipment we're putting in there in the wings. Once they were done, not only did they get the conduits bonded in, and they also, um, Jeff put the uh, rudder cables in there, at least sort of laid that in there with the little ferrule at the end there, and he's got the bell crank in there for that one. And as you can see, he's also uh, got the other one sorted out on this side, so there's the conduit in there. So both of those done now, so that's good.
And one of Dan's goals before he left was to get the engine running uh, while it was on the fuselage here. So with all the work he'd done, pretty much everything was ready. So it was time to do one last check over and make sure everything was sorted out and put some fuel in the tanks and let it bleed down into the header and then go from there and uh, see how things were going to work out for us. So here I'm just actually just second set of eyes and just checking everything. So, it, you know, everything's been put back together because there's been so many different things that Dan's worked on there. And uh, just uh, having once more, one more look over just to make sure everything's going to be okay. And Dan was uh, testing out the fuel pump and making sure that was working correctly. And uh, also I was checking to make sure nothing was going to interfere with the belts on the front of the engine. Anything get caught up there with all the new wires and everything there. But uh, everything was looking pretty good so it was time to actually crank it over and see what happened. And as luck would have it, our battery was way down because it hadn't been on the um, battery minder for quite some time, so it had to wait till the morning. So now we're on to Wednesday morning, and here's Jeff uh, using the right angle drill to drill those holes there from the fixture, or the little jig there, into those ribs that were bonded in on the previous day. So once he's got those um, ready to actually bolt up those hinge hangers, see how they fit. And now Dan and I armed with a fresh battery, or at least a fully charged one, decided it was time to see if we can get the engine running again. Well, it did start, but it wasn't running all that great. It was kind of hunting in the idle mode where it was sort of fluctuating uh, up and down from about 800 down to about 500 RPM. And usually this is a sign of something not connected correctly with uh, one of the sensors, or maybe there was sort of air in the, um, in the lines there for the diesel. So anyway, we decided to spend a little bit of time and just look at a few things and see if we could figure out uh, what was going on with that. And overnight the second of these uh, panels there in foam for the trim panels in the rear cabin had completed on the CNC machine. So Devin and Jeff uh, had taken both of them off and just sort of trimmed the sides off there with a hot wire. And we're prepping those up so they could actually lay up the carbon fiber over the top. And uh, there's the second one there. And same as the ones that we did there for the ones on the doors. They'll just be um, a thin layer of carbon fiber that we'll be ultimately taking to the upholsterer. And after checking over a few more things, it was time for round three with the engine. Well, it definitely wasn't right, so we decided that maybe the problem was that we hadn't had the throttle actually wired up yet, so Dan set about uh, wiring that up for us. And Jeff and Devin got both of these um, plugs there, or these foam plugs I should say, um, covered in the um, perf film that we have there. That was kind of the prep way they did it before, so when the carbon's laid up, uh, it'll release nicely from the foam. And for your viewing pleasure, round four.
then I said to Dan that given in all the hard work he'd put in on the engine that he could have the first honour of uh, blipping the throttle from the cabin. That's what he was doing there a couple of times. And it sounded like the turbo uh, spooling up, but it actually sounded a little different on the playback of the video here. So I'll actually have to see uh, next time we run it if there's any weird uh, sounds coming from anywhere. Anyway, so that's exciting. It's all working and it all had to do with the fact that the throttle wasn't wired up correctly or at all. And sadly, it was Dan's last day, and so he began packing up. Thanks again, Dan, for all your hard work. You really moved the project along more than you'll ever know. Um, you will be missed. And back to business. So Jeff got uh, the uh, Jeff and Devon both got the um, hangers there for the four plane. All eight of them kind of bolted into place there. Still, we actually ordered the wrong nuts, or at least I ordered the wrong nuts. Ten twenty fours instead of ten thirty twos. Who knew even Spruce even had ten twenty fours? Thought all they had was good stuff. Uh, anyway, so those are done. And finally, I had everything prepared now on the fuselage door frames there. So I had plugged um, the holes for the pin locks and also the hinge pins in a couple of places where we had the mounting brackets um, for the gas struts. And it was time to start spraying some paint. So Jeff started out on the inside there, just uh, on the right-hand frame. And uh, he's just spraying down the white um, primer that we've been using on everything else up till now same stuff that he used on the doors as well when we did those so and you know there's a lot of um, different patches and everything because of all the different uh, iterations that we've had around these doors and everything that I've learnt of what to do and what not to do uh, moving forward so it's interesting to see all that uh, go away um, behind a nice sort of sheen of of white gloss um, kind of rewarding if anybody has ever spent a lot of time sanding and prepping something that was full of lots of little patches and everything when you actually go to put that paint on it just makes you feel good <laughs> isn't it? just there's no other way to describe it uh, anyway but there are still some blemishes and little fixes and stuff that need to be addressed in there and there's um, quite a lot of little pinholes and stuff where the uh, natural carbon fiber was um, which is you know pretty much par for the course um, so I'll be working on those uh, on Monday to get those sorted out and then uh, probably just be a little um, you know some touch-ups there in the primer wherever I do the fill so just another light coat of primer um, to cover over those and then probably into um, maybe Tuesday or something or Wednesday of next week um, beyond to actually getting the top coat sprayed on those and after that's done it's off to the races and we can start installing everything in the cabin and try and get caught up on all the good stuff that Dan did on the outside so we're you know starting to get towards the home stretch here and um, be able to have all the systems all operating and with the wings moving along nicely and the foreplane moving along nicely I think we're on target um, to you know hopefully move this thing up to the airport in the very early part of next year, January, February, and um, absolutely March at the absolute latest. So that's our update for this week. Uh, thanks again to Dan for everything you've done. Um, just really much appreciated. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody here in the US. Um, tune in again next week. There'll be no video on Saturday. So tune in again next week and uh, see where we get up to. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>